emails um, with questions, and we actually finally have some data on the topic. And that is whether those being hospitalized are being hospitalized for COVID or because of COVID, rather than being hospitalized for a different problem and just coincidentally testing positive for COVID or incidentally being positive for COVID. The data that has become apparent has come out actually of the United Kingdom, the NHS, and they've been tracking this data. If we flip over here, this is their website, we'll link this in the video description, under COVID-19 hospital activity. If you scroll down, keep on going, um, they essentially say they've been tracking inpatients with confirmed COVID and then differentiating them between for covid and with COVID. So four being they're admitted because of COVID and with COVID being they were admitted for something else. And then they were just coincidentally tested positive for COVID. And they say they've been tracking this actually since June of 2021. They've been requiring providers, so healthcare providers, to distinguish between those being primarily treated for COVID and those being treated with COVID, but for whom the primary reason of their admission of being in the hospital was non-COVID related. Two seconds later. Let's start with that confusion, and you can try to set the record straight for folks. The CDC is sticking to its guidance that you should quarantine for only five days and don't need a test to leave that quarantine if you've tested positive. Why? And Peter, you're right, and they are sticking to that, and it can be a bit confusing. Hopefully this helps out a little bit. So we're talking of people, about people who either test positive for COVID or think they have COVID symptoms. You want to isolate. Ten minutes later. That surge in COVID cases across the country. About one in every five Americans is now tested positive for the virus, and more than 130,000 COVID-19 positive patients are currently receiving care at hospitals across the country. And a new CDC-led study finds children who are diagnosed with... A few moments later... People may not be scrambling to get vaccines today in Ramsgate, but there was still a glimmer of excitement for some. I'm 12 years old and I just had my first vaccine. Doctors say part of the reason it's so quiet is because many people have had COVID and they have to wait for a month until they can get a jab. It's not as busy as we normally used to be. We, we would easily hit numbers in 3,000s or 3,500s. But we are seeing about 500 to 800 patients uh, at, at this time. We know that. And the reason for that is could we just be after the Christmas or after the New Year. And the other thing is we have to understand a lot of people have had COVID. And you need for today? That's right. While vaccinators are still encouraging a third booster jab, there was more information out about whether a fourth was needed. Not yet, say the committee who advises vaccine policy. Okay. Thank, That's you it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. After three months of the booster, protection against hospitalisation stays at around 90% for those over 65. That defence against the highly infectious Omicron variant is what... One minute later... The United States is approaching a new pandemic trend. The hospitalization of children is soaring to a record high. According to data released by the U.S. government on Friday, there has been a rise in hospitalizations among children under the age of five, the only group not eligible for vaccination. Speaking on which, Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, said that the worrisome trend in children too young to be vaccinated underscores the need for all the kids and adults to get their shots to protect those around them. Since mid-December, as the highly contagious Omicron variant has spread furiously around the country, with the United States reporting record single-day infections, the hospitalization rate in these youngest children has surged to more than four in 100,000 youngsters, up from 2.5 per 100,000. Walensky pointed out that some unknown number of these cases are incidental. Children who test positive when they are hospitalized 
for non-COVID reasons. Many of the case reports of children come from asymptomatic kids who enter the hospital for elective procedures or other illnesses, further complicating the picture for epidemiologists trying to figure out risks for children. Now, earlier in a White House briefing, the U.S.'s top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, said many children hospitalized with COVID-19 have other health conditions that make them more susceptible to complications from the virus. That includes obesity, diabetes, and lung disease. Tempter, stay loose. One, two, three. You did great.